Um, it was the fear of like, the fact that I could have lost my life. Yeah. And I was having constant like flashbacks of the birthing experience because I, I gave birth to her in um, a birth center. And then everything that happened afterwards, I kept on like replaying in my head, like a broken record. And I couldn't stop it, despite trying to like suppress it <laughs> and avoid people, things, or situations that brought it up. Welcome back. We are here with another episode of Pivotal Moment. Again, always so excited to be able to come to you all and share so many different experiences from people all over. And today is no exception. I am excited and honored to have Sultana with us today, who is going to talk about her own pivotal moment. As you all know, I don't do bios. So Sultana, welcome. I'm going to have you tell everyone who you are, what you got going on. Perfect. So hi, my name is Sultana Kareem. I am, so I have many different roles. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am the owner and psychotherapist at Kareem Counseling Services, PLLC, where I provide individual and group counseling to pregnant and postpartum individuals that are struggling, um, whether it's they have a mood and anxiety disorder, they're struggling with pregnancy or infant loss, um, they're struggling with birth trauma or infertility, or even domestic and sexual violence. And sometimes all of those go hand in hand, depending on the circumstances in which that person is in. Um, I am also a trainer, so I train um, healthcare professionals, um, mental health professionals about um, perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, so how to appropriately screen, um, treat this disorder uh, or these disorders. Um, I do also talk about and present on racial and ethnic disparities related in the perinatal mental health field. Um, I present it on domestic and sexual violence. Um, race trauma. Um, mm. I'm also a clinical supervisor, so I supervise um, those who are working towards their licensure, whether it's um, a licensed professional counseling license or a licensed marriage and family therapist license. Wow. So yeah. you guys, first of all, you see why I didn't want to say the whole thing. <laughs> Yes, it is a lot, but I mean, kudos. I I love it. I love all things mental wellness and 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 women and you know racial disparities. So I love that you are covering all of that. So of course, this is pivotal moment. So Sultana, what pivotal moment are you going to be sharing with us today? Well, when I was preparing for this, I was like, there's been so many different pivotal moments in my life. Yeah, um, and. Which one do I select? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but I did land it on the idea of um, talking about my experience postpartum. Um, mm. So I struggled with postpartum PTSD um, due to, I had an emergency transfer to the hospital. Um, I lost consciousness on the way to the hospital. Um, I had to get into emergency surgery to remove my placenta because it was it wasn't coming out during birth. Wow! Um, and my daughter was also in the NICU, which all of that compounded together just made a cocktail disaster for me. Yeah, um, because there was a fear that I wouldn't live, or mm. my daughter wouldn't live. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Yeah. I can only imagine. Even now, talking about it, probably just it's probably still so, so traumatic just to think about having to experience something like that. Yeah. Wow. And every time her birthday comes around, I'm reminded of what happened. Yeah. Um, because she she uh, was born December 22nd 
And I have a little ornament that the NICU nurse made for me that has her a piece of her hat, it has her footprint, it has a um, clothing pin in it. And so every time we get prepared for the holidays and I bring out all the ornaments, there it is. <laughs> wow, wow. So how did that change things for you? It reminded me that life is too short mm -hmm. and it's not, it's not guaranteed. And you yeah. have to live in the moment with yeah. the people that you care for and love. Wow. Wow. And, and you know, we, oh, go ahead. Um, and the fact that maternal mental health was my health at the time. Like I was, I was a therapist when I was pregnant and all of that. I've been a therapist for over 12 years, but at the moment I was in denial. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, yeah this can't be happening to me. Like what? No one talked about this traumatic piece. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. how this could have happened. Like I've yeah. heard in stories with other people that I worked with, I worked with sexual and domestic violence victims, but, but I did never have thought things would have happened the way it did mm -hmm. and how I struggled with my mental health the first couple of months. Wow. Wow. And, you know, I want to talk just a little bit about that part, because I love when we kind of explore, you know, when you're kind of a professional or expert in a particular area mm -hmm. and then you face that. Right. I love when we kind of explore that, because at the at the root, situations like that reveal how we really are all the same. Right. Like well, it doesn't matter your title. It doesn't matter you know, your, your skin color at the core, these experiences that happen, they really do kind of show how we are all the same. So talk about, I mean, you kind of touched on that, but talk about how that probably, I'd imagine even added to the mental, the mental anxiety because you are a professional, you are a therapist and here you're dealing with some mental health challenges around this very, you know, scary situation. So talk about what that part was even like. I was in denial for a while. Yeah. Um, and at my, I remember, I, was, I think it was my six week appointment with my midwife. Yeah. And I was crying and she's like, on Edinburgh, which is the, um, postnatal depression screening that they do at six weeks appointment, a six week appointment, but they also do it in pregnancy. Um, just like you rate it low, but I'm looking at you and you're crying. Wow. <laughs> but, like stop bullshitting and say what's actually going on. Yeah. Um, and I did end up telling her like, I struggled with attaching to my daughter. Uh, yeah. Mm. And creating that bond. Yeah. Um, I think I'm in my office. I have my tissue box. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I can only imagine. I was struggling. Like, I avoided going anywhere near the hospital where wow. I had the surgery. My daughter was in the NICU. My yeah. My husband had, like, we, he had to force me to go to the NICU. Wow. Um, it was like, we have to go check on Pranavi and see she's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you think it was a fear? Was it a fear that was creating that? Or just this was all part of what comes with the, depre the, the postpartum depression? Um, it was the fear of like, the fact that I could have lost my life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I was having constant like flashbacks of the birthing experience because I, I gave birth to her in um, a birth center. Yeah. And then everything that happened afterwards, I kept on like replaying in my head like a broken record. Wow. And I couldn't stop it. Yeah. This wow. way, trying to like suppress it <laughs> and yeah. avoid people, things or situations that brought it up. Wow. 
I mean, I think it's worth just even pausing for a moment and just, I mean, obviously, you know, this still gets you emotional. I'm sure, first of all, thank you for being so transparent because I know people that hear this, that see this, they're going to be able to relate, whether it's connected to a situation like yours or other type of traumatic mm -hmm. events, right? Mm -hmm. I think yeah. it's so beautiful that you're saying, listen, it's okay to acknowledge, you know, pain and, and sadness and uh, post-traumatic, you know, um, anxieties and emotions. So I just want to commend you even for just being transparent and it, allowing us to even see the emotion behind what you're sharing. Yeah. Yeah. It's important because a lot of people will suppress it and just be like, I have to keep on moving or I have to, they're in survival mode, like I have to survive this yeah um, instead of addressing it yeah yeah and it took me a while like like i said i was in denial so my <laughs> midwife was like something was going on um yeah and realizing myself like okay yeah you're right like i i am struggling and it's okay that i'm struggling because i'm a human being and we all struggle as some parts of our lives yeah um, and what helped me kind of get through that was being with um, other birthing people, um, like I was at, La I moved around the county. So I live in Prince William County. <laughs> yeah. I went to the La Leche League meetings and the postpartum support meetings at the hospital, um, in Woolbridge. And then I will travel all the way to Manassas and go to their postpartum support, Virginia, um, support groups and as well as their baby cafe, because I was interacting with other people that either yeah. had similar experience or the similar stage as I was in. So I didn't yeah. feel alone. Yeah. And I did also um, postpartum fitness and stroller yeah. strides because again, there was other women, other women, other moms that they may have not experienced the same thing I was experiencing, but that I needed that support, mm -hmm. which I didn't get from my home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's what I'm hearing again is the power of support. Right. Mm -hmm. That's I yeah. feel like that's so key when you're dealing with any type of situation that kind of knocks you off your feet like that. Mm -hmm. Sounds like that's one of the things. And you were like, I'm going to get that support wherever I can <laughs> do everything and anything. Because my my um, midwife was like, well, you can take medication. And I was like, as a therapist myself, I'm very integrative and use other modalities before I use medication. Like if I, I have to, and I've exhausted all resources, then I'll use the medication. But yeah. I was like, I need to try everything else first <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> to get me to feel better. Yeah, yeah. And it works yeah. plus with therapy. Like I was in therapy for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I know that for those who follow you on your social media, like you go hard in just bringing awareness, you know, <laughs> making sure people understand you talk about these topics. Obviously, I didn't know you before the, in, the situation happened, but was is that kind of because of what you went through? Like, did that motivate you even more to just feel like you have to get this information out there more? Yeah, yeah. Like before I knew of like perinatal mood anxiety disorders because I saw it in the women and people that are working with um, that experience domestic and sexual violence. And some of it, they have birth trauma and they also were trying to survive yeah, <laughs> of yeah. just abusive relationships. Um, but my own experience kind of like lit a fire in me because I struggled with finding the therapist that specialized in this that actually understood yeah. the nuances of being um, pregnant, postpartum, knowing the influx of hormones and just the ideation of being a parent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that's why I started my practice because I was like, this, why is this so hard <laughs> yep. to find a therapist and a therapist that looked like me and understand my culture, which yeah. is the big piece. Like I, like even now with the, my colleagues, a lot of them don't look like me or understand my culture. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 
I, I absolutely love that. You know, I, I remember having a conversation with my husband one time and, you know, we were talking about there's so much talk about diversity and inclusion and all these, you know, hot topic yep. trending terms. Right. Yep. And I think sometimes people, you know, he pointed this out that sometimes people want to address it by saying, you know, we're all the same. Right. Like they think that's the solution. But really, it's about being able to embrace the differences. Yep. And the truth is there are differences in cultures. Our culture yep. is very different, you know, historically, currently access to medical care. Like there's a lot of differences in culture. So I love that you were like, I'm going to give the people what they need. <laughs> and it's like, I know people are struggling. They're struggling with finding a therapist that has availability. They're struggling to find someone that can relate to them. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, you know, we always get to this point where I ask all my guests, you know, if somehow everyone missed every single thing you said up until this point, and this was the one thing they were going to take away from this conversation, what would that be? What is your message? that you are not alone. You do not have to struggle by yourself and the pressures of being a parent. It's, it's a lot and no one talks about it and that's okay. Talk about it, ask for help. Wow, wow, beautiful. Well, Sultana, I am honored again that you have come on the show, um, talked about your pivotal moment, did we miss anything else? I want to make sure that people, and also be sure to share, of course, we'll have it in the show notes, but mm -hmm. I'm sure as people, you know, whether they're tuned in, watching a replay or on, you know, through their podcast, they want to reach out to you. They want to get more, you know, help, assistance. How can they find you? Um, so you can find me by my website. My website is www.kareem, K-A-R-I-M, counseling.org. Um, I am on both Instagram and Facebook at Kareem Counseling. So it makes it very simple. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, again, thank you so much for coming on and sharing such a powerful, powerful story. And we, we really appreciate it. And kudos. How old is your little girl now? She's four. Four. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Also, awesome. well, it's congratulations. a great age of exploring, exploring yeah. everything, <laughs> testing boundaries, but also want independence. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, we certainly are glad that everything turned out so well. And again, thank you for sharing and being so transparent and coming on and talking about that. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And of course, you all, once again, be sure to reach out to Sultana if you, you she mentioned uh, many other things other than the, the prenatal and, and um, you know, motherhood, you know, depression, um, intimate partner violence, all these things. Follow her because the tips are so powerful, constant reminders and tips and everything around mental health. So be sure either click the information in the show notes, you see the information on the screen, be sure to follow check her out and be healthy mentally, physically. And thank you again for tuning in and we'll see you next time on Pivotal Moments.